Hello class. Today I'd like to share with you all about the being and helping verbs. Now there is a list and the list is right here. I'm going to bring it a little bit closer for you to see, but it is a being and helping verb list. Once you have these words in your head, you can simply just find them in the sentence and these being and helping verbs help the main verb. But you've got to have this memorized and you simply memorize the list. Now, in order to help you facilitate the learning of that, I actually have a song that helps you. These words here are the being verbs, the ones at the top in the box, and then the words in the bottom are the helping verbs. Now, what's the difference? The difference is the being verbs can actually stand alone in a sentence without another main verb with them. But they can also go along with the main verb as well. But the helpers just help a main verb. And I'll explain that in a minute with the sentences that I have on the board for you. So to start out with though, we need to learn them. We need to learn them. Am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been. Those are the being verbs or state of being verbs. There are also helping verbs and they are have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, could. Now the song goes like this. You know the song, My Country Tis of Thee? Goes like this. Am is, or was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, may, might, must, can, and could. Am is, or was, were, be, being, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, Shall, will, should, would, may, might, must, can, may, might, must, can, and could. All right, so there are all the being and helping verbs. Again, being verbs can stand alone. The helpers cannot stand alone. For example, I am washing the dishes. I'm going to find a piece of chalk here and let's look at that sentence. I am washing the dishes. Is there a word on our list? Yes, am. Notice that there's another verb though, a word that shows action. Washing is something you can do, therefore it's a verb, right? But it's not just washing, it's am washing. Together, don't forget that there could be two words working together to be the verb, the main verb, and in this case, a being verb that is also a helping verb. Being verbs can be helping verbs, but I could also say, I am well. I am Mr. Doyle. Notice. There's just an am in the sentence I just said. So it could stand alone or it could help the main verb. Let's go to the next one. He is doing well. Is there something you can do? You can do something, right? Doing is a main verb. Is there a word helping the main verb? Yes, is. Is, is on our list? Yes, it's a state of being helping the main verb. Josh and Joe have done well in history. Is there a word that shows action? Yes. Done, you can do that, right? You can do something. He's done it. Have done, is have on our list? Yes, it's have is on our list of helping verbs, right? Therefore, have with the word done can work together. Now, notice that you, you could have several of these in a, in a six, you could have more than one helping verb. 
will have done, will be doing. See, then there's three words. So you could have several. So make sure you don't miss one because there could be more than one being or helping verb in your sentence to help you. So be watching and making sure that you don't miss one. And then uh, you'll get it right. Now for the remainder of our time, what we're going to do is I'm going to zoom in in or on a piece of paper for you so that you can see it more clearly what I'm talking about. And let's see if we can find the main verb as well as the being or helping verb. So let me show you what, what we're talking about here on this piece of paper. All right, the directions say in each sentence, circle the word in parentheses, underline the helping word. The little beaver has grown or grew quickly. And there's our little beaver friend. Hmm, well, would it be, would it be grow? Did the beaver groan or grew? has grown or has grew. You need to learn that it would be grown. So circle the word in parentheses. So we're going to circle the word grown. Now, do we see a word from our list? And this was word be, be, men have has, a do, do, did. Have, has, has is one. Therefore, we're going to what? Underline the helping word, see? Has grown. We wouldn't say has grew, but we would say has grown. All right. The weather has begun, began or has begun. Again, we need to learn which words go with, it's called the past participle. And whenever we have has, so we have have, we have has begun. Have is present, right? But if it's past participle, which we'll have to learn in a different video, we actually do the word, use the word begun. Has begun. We wouldn't say has began. We would just say we began, right? The weather has begun, has grown, okay? And if you notice, whenever you have has or have with the verb, you'll notice that the in, there's an in in the word form. Not always, but look. Eaten or ate. Eaten. Has eaten. Notice that's a word on our list. And then the main verb eaten. Fell or fallen. Is there a word on our list? Yes, have fallen. Many trees have fallen. We wouldn't say many trees have fell, fallen. Notice the N. The sound of falling trees has rung or has rang through the forest. There's the word has on our list, rung has what we wouldn't say rang. That's present tense. He rang the bell, but he has rung. Now, what, what, what would be the subject of our sentence? Just uh, throwing it out there. We don't have to do that in this sentence, but would trees or would sound? They're both nouns. Which one is it? What has rung? Has the trees rung or has the sound? It would actually be sound if we were finding a subject. And you may not have learned this yet, but maybe you have. If you're in my class, you have. Of falling trees is in a prepositional phrase. Therefore, it cannot be the subject. But that's, that's for a different exercise. We're just looking at the verb has rung. Beavers have through or beavers have thrown mud and sticks together. Again, the word have is there, so we circle thrown. Now in this one above, in number five, there wasn't actually an in, but a lot of them do end with in. Thrown, 
When there's a helper, we use thrown. We don't say have through, have thrown. The narrow stream has become, or the narrow stream has became a wide pond. Well, remember, that's on our list. Has is the helping verb. Is it has, has become or has became? The stream has become. Became is just past, but not past participle. Past participle is the verb form when it has a helper with it on our list. If it has has or have, I should say. The beavers have did a good job on their lodge, or the beavers have done. Done. That's the one we use. We don't say have did, we say have done. And what's the helper? Yes, have is the helper. Finally, the lake surface has frozen, or finally the lake surface has froze. Again, frozen. What's the helping verb? Has, it's on our list. Am, is, or was, were, be, be, been, have, has, had, do, does, did, right? It's on our list. And frozen is the verb form that goes. When we have a has or have, we say frozen, not froze. Again, there's an in on it. The father beaver has took care of his family, or the father beaver has taken care of his family. Did you say taken? Yes. And what is the helper? Has. Has is on our list. Has is on our list. I hope that you took this to heart and learned something today. Notice it's on our list. We underlined it because it's a helper. It's helping the main verb. Has helps taken. How do we know it's taken? Because when it's with have or has, there's another list of verbs that you learn which one it is that goes with have or has. Taken, frozen, become, thrown, wrong, fallen, eaten. Notice the en form or the n at the end tends to be the one, but not always. Not always. Will you take care? Go ahead and click like if you liked this or if this was helpful. And remember, learn something new every day. You take care. Bye-bye.